Hello everybody, you are watching North Coast Craftsman. This is a channel all about wood and the many things you can do with it. Today we will be picking up some of this gorgeous hickory tongue and groove board and then we're going to show you how to sand and finish this wood so that you can maximize the look of your wall. Now I'm extremely excited about today. This is the first time that I get to see what all this wood is going to look like. He did give us some samples, hence what was in my hand before. Now we get to go pick it up and see it in person. So guys, let's get started. picked up all the wood and let me tell you this stuff is beautiful I mean this has so much character if you can if you can see all that look at wormholes and stuff like this I mean this stuff is absolutely gorgeous but if you can kind of also see right in here you got a little bit of a glare well that's from the planer so these right here are the marks we're trying to get off and this rough stuff here so this all needs to be sanded before we can finish it. Because if you finish it with the imperfections and stuff on it, you're going to notice that, you're going to see it, and it's not going to look very good when it gets up on the wall. So that's the next step here, to get all these bundles taken off, spread all this stuff out, and start sanding. First thing we're going to do is we have an orbital sander here. We've got the sanding disc. And if you can see, that's 80 grit. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with 80 and we're gonna work our way all the way up to 220. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna put the finish on, but we have a lot of sanding here to do. So like I said, we're gonna start with our 80. We're gonna work our way all the way up to the 220. And we're gonna make this board look nice. Now, since using a sander is dusty, it's loud and it's dirty, we're gonna want our trusty eyeglasses. We're gonna want ear protection. And we're also gonna want some sort of mask. So for you people who like rustic wood, I think you'll absolutely love this stuff. There's wormholes, if you can see kind of right there. That's called spalting, right here. That's also called spalting. And uh, this board here also has it with the wormholes, the spalting and all that stuff. It's just kind of something that happens when wood starts to rot, like right before the wood starts to rot and it makes these black lines in the wood. I mean, you can kind of see them throughout this wood here. It just looks awesome. So if the rest of these boards look anything like these first three boards, the customer's absolutely gonna love this. So by now I've said the words tongue and groove probably 40, 50 times. And now I just kind of want to show you, for any of you that don't know what tongue and groove boards are, I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say the words tongue and groove. Now this is what's called a tongue. The tongue runs down the whole length of the board. And if I flip this board over, that's what's called the groove. 
And the groove also runs down the whole length of the board. <clears throat> so when you put this up against the wall, you're gonna put your nail through the tongue, and then you're gonna slide the next board on top of the tongue. Now your nail is going to be under here, so the groove covers up the nail. So that's one nice thing about these tongue and groove boards, is you can't see any of the nail marks. So now that we've finished sanding and we've got all our boards laid out in front of us, we're going to start putting on the polyurethane. As you can see, we've got a satin Minwax fast drying polyurethane, and we're going to be applying it here with this foam brush. Now, the trick is with the foam brush, is not to leave any brush strokes. So the key to not leaving brush strokes, and especially with the first coat of poly, is you're just gonna wanna put just a little coat on. You don't wanna do too much because this coat is gonna be the coat that the wood really absorbs and sucks in. So you don't need a whole lot on this very first coat. And now the key is, is once you have the whole board polyed, you're going to want to take your brush and rub it from one end all the way down to the other end, and this will eliminate most of your brush strokes. I've found that the best brush to use is the foam brush because you get less streaks, you get less brush marks, so it does a little bit better of a job. So we're going to go ahead and keep polying these uh, boards, and um, when we're done with the first coat, we will come back and we'll tell you what to do after the first coat. So we have our first coat of polyurethane on. If you'll notice, the boards aren't very smooth. So what ended up happening is after that first coat of polyurethane goes on, it pops the grain of the wood. So what that means is it raises the grain, kind of stands the grain up. So now between every coat, we have to sand with 220 grit sandpaper. After a second coat of polyurethane, we will evaluate what the wood looks like and we'll make a decision based on whether or not we need a third coat. We are back and we're here to check after the second coat of poly to see if we need a third coat. And there's a couple ways you can do that. The first step that I always take is to see what the boards feel like. If they're pretty soft and glossy, they don't have too much roughness to them, they're getting pretty close to being ready. The second thing is the gloss. Since we use satin, we don't want a whole lot of gloss on these boards. And the more coats you put on, the more gloss you're gonna have. So for us, the boards are soft. They have just enough gloss. These boards are ready to go. We do not need a third coat. Now anybody out there that would like to put a third coat on their own boards, essentially all you do is you follow the exact same steps we did between coat one and coat two, and you repeat the process. When you're finally done with your last coat of poly, you do not wanna sand because that's gonna create scuffs and we do not want the scuffs. 
So when you're done with your last coat of poly, that's when the boards are ready to go. That's the last step. You put them on the wall. With that being said, this is the end of part two. So if you liked the video, comment below, like it. Also subscribe to this channel. We also have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. So go check those out if you're interested for more projects that we do. Thank you for watching.